Hello, welcome to lecture 15 for Math 155. Today we're going to be talking about data fitting and in particular how we can use least squares regression to uh, fit a line or a curve to model some data. Um, you might be thinking why are we doing this when we've just been talking about maximizing and minimizing functions? Well, it turns out that least squares is a way of minimizing the error between data that you may have collected and a model that you're trying to fit to those data. So some of the new terminology today includes interpolation and extrapolation, as well as residual. We'll talk about these terms as we go through the class. Okay, so suppose we have some data points. So here, say on the x-axis is your independent variable and y is your dependent variable. You've made some measurements and you've got these points here. So uh, this is your x1, y1, x2, y2, and so on. And perhaps you want to try to predict other values based on these points, okay? So suppose you want to predict this value here. What's that value? If you have some x input, what is the y output gonna be? I'll call this y sub i for interpolation because that's what we're doing here. We're interpolating between points. So interpolation is finding a value between data points. So we don't have a data point for that, but we want to find uh, or estimate what it is likely to be based on points either side. So finding a, a value between um, data points. And if we compare that to extrapolation, where I say we want to go beyond the, the bounds or the range of our, um, of our function, then we want to say, okay, well, say what's this value up here? So given this x input here, what's this gonna be? Let's call this y e for extrapolation. So that's finding a value outside or beyond the, the range of your data points. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, so you want to plot a line of best fit, it might look something like this. All we need to do then is to work out what the equation of that line is. So where's its intercept and where's its slope? So this here is just some straight line. So it's of the form y is equal to b plus mx, where m is the gradient and b is the y-intercept. So we can use our knowns. In other words, we can use our data points here to give us an estimate for our unknowns. So these are unknowns, the y and the x. And we want to estimate our unknowns based on those data points. So how might we go about doing that? Well, suppose, for example, we just have one data point. So suppose x1, y1 is equal to minus one, minus three. All that means then is that we can just fit a horizontal line to our data. We only have one data point. So all we can extrapolate from this is that for any x value we put in, we get minus three out, okay? So that's just gonna look something like this. We have our one data point here at, um, this is y and this is x. The one data point here, when x is minus one, we end up with y being minus three down here. So that means that if we were to plot a line here, we could extrapolate out that all values of y are just minus three. Now, this is obviously a very simplified case um, and doesn't really tell you anything at all. Uh, but given that just one data point, that's all that we can do. But if we have two data points, we can now uh, plot a straight line. So if we have x1, y1 is equal to minus one, minus three, and we have an additional point here, one, two, well, now we can plot a straight line through those two points. So if we have a function that's called g of x is equal to b plus mx, if we assume that both of our points lie on this line, then we just need to have um, substitute our, our points into this function. So we have y1 is equal to b plus m times x1, so minus three, is going to equal b plus m times y minus one. So I'll just call this minus m. And for our second point, we're going to have my uh, two is equal to b plus m times y one, which is one. Okay, so that's just taking this value here and this value here, and likewise, that goes here and this one goes here. Okay, so if both points are on the line, 
all this style is just a, a linear system. Okay, so we've got, uh, if we write it around the other way, we're going to have b minus m is equal to minus three and b plus m is equal to two. So we can solve this through elimination or we could use matrices. So we could write this as a matrix equation one minus one, one, one times by bm is equal to minus three, two. And we can solve this just in the same way that we've solved uh, systems of linear equations previously, we can find the inverse. So if we find the inverse, if we say let this equal a, let's let uh, vector equal x, and I'll call it um, c this time instead, rather than b, just because we've already got a b here. Then we've got ax is equal to c, so x is equal to a inverse c, assuming we can find an inverse for a. If we couldn't find an inverse for a, then this would not work. But seeing as we we're plotting a, a, a line between two points, we know that this is going to work. So we can come up with a solution here. In this case, we end up with um, our x is equal to minus a half uh, five over two. So this tells us that we have our function y is equal to b plus mx. Well, our b is going to be minus a half and our m is going to be five over two. And we have our x. So we've used uh, our matrix equation to solve the system and now we can plot a line. So if we have these lines, uh, these points here, so this is our um, point up here is one, two, the point down here is minus one, minus three. Well, we can plot a straight line through these points, which should look a bit better than that, but approximately something like that. So this is our line y is equal to minus a half plus five over two x. So using this, we can interpolate. So in other words, if our um, x value is say half, some point between these data points, we can estimate what our function value is by just reading it off. So we could substitute it into this function. So f of a half is just going to be equal to minus a half times uh, plus five over two times by the x value, which is a half. So that's just equal to three over four. We can also extrapolate. So if we want to find uh, the value when x is equal to two, so that would be somewhere over here. What's our y value then? Well, f of two is just going to be minus a half plus five over two times by two which is equal to four and a half. So we can do the same thing for three points. So for example, here, if we've got three points, we can plot a parabola through them. So we can draw a quadratic curve, looks something like this, of the form y is equal to a plus bx plus cx squared. So if this point here is say x1, y1, this one is x2, y2, this one here is x3, y3. We've now got three points we want to find three unknowns. So we can set up three equations here. So we can set up equation a plus b times by x1 plus c times by x2 squared, sorry, x1 squared, is going to equal y1. And then likewise for the others. So we can write this again, as a matrix equation, although we've got squares in there, these squared terms here are just numbers, actually. So we can write this as a matrix equation of this form. And then if we let this matrix here be A, this vector here be X, this vector here be, let's call this Y, we're going to end up with AX is equal to Y, or we can solve this as X is equal to a inverse y, again, assuming that we can find that inverse. So we can do this for any number of uh, data points, and we can plot a polynomial equal to uh, of order n minus one, where we have n points, and we can do that. That's very straightforward to do, but is that necessarily the right thing to do? Um, suppose we have two students that have measured some data here, and they've got very similar results here, and we want to estimate the point at minus 0 0.75, so we want to estimate what is this point up here? And it's probably going to be some value around there. Okay, so that's at minus 0 0.75. How do we do that? Well, if we were to take the approach above, we would be plotting a polynomial through all of the points. And so 
these students would get very different answers, even though their data look very similar, this student here would estimate that their value would be something like eight, and this one down here, something like 2.5. So the, their estimates for the output is very different because they've overfitted their data. The reason we don't want to do this is that we have errors in our data and we don't want to um, overfit our model and capture too much of those uh, those errors. What we want to do is try to minimize the errors in our model. So we can do this using something called least squares reg regression. Um, essentially what this is, is in the previous slides we were using um, a model of this form. We had our data yi and we had a model f of xi, so xi is just our uh, input, the our ith input, and we wanted to set this equal to zero, so our, um, our model went through all of our data points. Instead, we want to have a residual on the right-hand side, which is just an error. So our ith residual, or our ith data point, is ri, and this is generally not going to be equal to zero. So this here, you can think of residual as being error. So what's going on here then? Well, rather than trying to say plot a polynomial through all of these points that maybe look something like this or something crazy, what we actually want to do instead is plot a um, plot some function. It could be whatever it happens to be. It could be a parabola like this. It could be a straight line. Regardless, we want to plot something, our model f of x, where now we're going to be trying to minimize our uh, residuals. So each of our residuals, our ris, are going to be given by these red lines here. So this is say r4, r3, r2, r1. We want to try to minimize our residuals somehow. So how can we do this? Well, we can do this in a variety of different ways. Well, if, for example, um, we just sum up all of our residuals, this is one possible way, but the problem there is that we're going to have, say, our ones below the curve cancelling with the ones above the curve. So that's not necessarily going to reduce the overall error, and that's not a very good approach to take. So we don't want to take that approach. We could use the absolute value instead, which gets over this cancelling out problem, but uh, comes up with some other issues, and which makes it essentially too hard to do. Um, we won't go into the details of that. But essentially, it's to do with how we, we differentiate um, these things, and it's, it's much harder to differentiate our um, absolute value function. Instead, we can square our residuals. We take the sum of all of our data point size 1 to n, and we're going to have this factor of a half at the front as well, just because we're going to be doing some differentiation in a moment. And when we differentiate this, the 2 comes to the front and we'll cancel out the half. So that half there is just to, uh, for a bit of convenience. So what we want to do is we want to minimize this sum here, and that will help us to uh, minimize our error. Okay, so suppose we've uh, got some data points here. So we've run an experiment of some kind, we've, or we've got measured something in the field, and we've got some data points, and we want to fit a straight line to these data points here. So we want to fit the line y is equal to b plus mx to these data points. Okay, so we want to minimize our residual function. So if we take the function from the previous slide, we had a half of the sum of ri squared. So what are, our, what are our ris? Well, this is r1, this is r2, this is r3. In other words, that's just the difference between our data points. So this here is y3. Difference between our data points and the points that we would have on our curve. So this is y3, and this would be f of x3 here. So we want to minimize this this red line, or rather we're going to be minimizing the sum of the squares of our residuals. Okay, so if we substitute this in, it's going to be a half of, what's our y1? Our y1 is uh, minus 3, sorry. so we have minus 3 minus our f of x1, so x1 was minus 1, so we're going to have minus b plus minus 1 times m, so put this out here, so minus m. We're going to take the square of that. So it's going to be our r1 squared. Then we do the same for the other points. And so all I've done here is I've substituted in for each of these uh, residuals, we've just substituted in 
the corresponding points. So our y values go first. So we have a minus three, two, and a four. That's these values here. And that's because we have a minus three, a two, and a four here. And then we take our function, this function here, our model, and we want to substitute in our x values. So we had a minus one, a one, and a three. And that's where the minus one comes here in front of the m. We have a one in front of the m here, and we've got a three in front of the m here. So we've been talking about how to find minima recently. So what we want to do is we want to look at where the gradients of this function, the partial derivatives of r with respect to b and with respect to m are both equal to zero. So we can take partial derivative of our function r with respect to b, and we're gonna get minus three minus b minus m, so this one in brackets here, plus two minus m minus b, plus four minus b minus three m. So all we've done there is we've taken the partial derivative of this function up here, our r, r is a function of b and m. We're gonna take our partial derivative with respect to b first of all. So if we group everything together and simplify this, we can have minus three plus three m plus three b. Recall we want this to be equal to zero. So we can rewrite this as three b plus three m is equal to three. Okay, now let's do exactly the same, but with our m. So we take our derivative with respect to m and we get this, which simplifies down to minus 17 plus 11m plus 3b is equal to zero. Again, we can rewrite this as 3b plus 11m is equal to 17. So we want to solve these equations here to find when uh, we have a um, minimum for our function. So in order to do that, we can just solve a system of equations. So we can write this as 3, 3, 3, 11, bm is equal to 3, 17. We can solve this exactly the same way as we've done previously. So we can use this uh, to find the inverse of our matrix and end up with ultimately bm is equal to, we write this inverse in here, 3, 11, inverse, goes by 317, that works out to be minus three quarters, seven quarters. Okay, so what does that look like? If these are our data points here. In fact, this one here should actually be down here somewhere. This is minus one, minus three. We've got our data points. What we're doing is we say, okay, we're gonna plot a line fairly close to our data points. Perhaps it's gonna be something like this. Okay, so this is gonna be our R3, our R2, and our R1. See, as we change the slope, of the line RM, and as we change our B, the intercept, it's gonna affect um, the size of the residuals, and then hence it's gonna affect the, the squaring. So the reason we square it as well is because we want to um, not only avoid this canceling out, um, but we also want to heavily penalize large errors. Okay. So this function here, this is our Y is equal to minus three over four, plus seven over four X. So those values are just coming from solving this equation up here. And so that would allow us to predict any other value we want. So this function here, this minimizes a half of the sum from I is equal to one to three of YI minus F of XI squared. So in other words, it minimizes the sum of the square of our residuals. So we can derive a, a general formula for a best fit line. If we first of all denote Q bar is equal to one over N, that's by the sum of I is equal to one to N of QI. So this is just a bit of notation. Then we can write down our residual function, our R, B and M is equal to a half of the sum of our residuals squared from I is equal to one to N. 
and that's just equal to a half the sum or is equal to one to n of y i minus b plus m x i all squared. So we can sum up all of these different residuals after they've been squared and take half of them. We can write out the partial derivatives. So dr db is going to equal, well, we have a sum of, in fact, we have minus the sum of y i minus b plus m x i. So the two comes to the front and cancels with the half. And we get a minus out here because we had a minus sign in front of the b. We can rewrite this as just minus the sum of y i, y is equal to one to n, plus, well, we're gonna have b n times. So this is just gonna be n lots of b. So this sum here is going from i is equal to one to n. So we have n lots of our b, and we're gonna have m times by our sum of our x i's, y is equal to one to n. So if we go back to this definition up here, that looks very much like what we have here, except for the one over n term at the front. So these we can actually write as minus n times by y bar plus n times by b plus n times by m x bar. So these are just saying, these are just the averages. Okay, so this is your um, arithmetic average, our, our y bar and our x bar of our um, y i and our x i. And we want our dr db to be equal to zero. But this implies that y bar is gonna be equal to b plus m times by x bar. So in other words, our x bar, y bar, our average point is on the best fit line by definition. It's also gonna make it simpler for, for finding this best fit line because the things we need to find, we just know we need to find our averages. So we can find our averages from the data, our y bar and our x bar. So that's gonna help us to find our b and our n. Okay, so that's our drdb. We can now look at drdm. So calculate our partial derivative of the residuals with respect to m. Okay, so now we're gonna have a minus sum of xi times by yi minus b plus m xi. The reason we've got a minus at the front is because of this minus that we had in the original function here and the two cancels again with the half. So again, we can do a little bit of manipulation here. We can write this instead as minus sum, and these all these sums are from one to n, sum from one to n of xi yi, plus, the reason it's a plus is because this minus here is gonna cancel with this minus here, plus b, again, sum from one to n of, our x i's and then plus m times by the sum one to n of our x i's all squared. Again, we can use this definition up here, uh, our bar notation, to write this as minus n times by x y bar. So this this is x y and then take um, take the average of them, plus n times by b x bar, plus mn times by x squared bar. Note that x squared bar is not generally equal to x bar squared, okay? This first one here, that's the average of the squares. That is not the same as the square of the average. So x bar is the square and um, x bar is the average. So squaring that is generally not the same as uh, squaring the individual components and then taking the average. So just make sure you, you're aware of that difference. Okay, again, this has got to be equal to zero. So we can get rid of the ends and we can rewrite this as uh, x, y bar is equal to b times by x bar plus x squared 
bar. That's my F. So we've got two equations now. We have this equation and we also have the equation from before. We have that Y bar is equal to um, B plus M X bar. So we can take these two equations here and we can solve them. So we can end up solving these. I won't go through the details here, but we end up with M is equal to X Y bar minus X bar Y bar all divided by x squared bar minus x bar squared. So it is also possible to show that this is a minimizer. That's beyond the, the scope of this course. Essentially, the, the key thing to take away from here in this general formula is that we've um, to find out our b and our m, and we can find out our b now just from substituting our m into this equation here, we can find our b and m by working out what our, um, our averages are for our X and our Y, finding out this average here, and finding out the average of the squares of our X. This term here is, is gonna automatically um, come out of our X bars um, because we're just squaring it. So using these um, uh, different averages, we can work out what our gradient of our best fit line is. And then from that, we can substitute it back into this equation here which is the equation for the best fit line. We all know what our y bar and our x bar and our m is, so we can find out what b is. We can also do least squares regression when we have functions that are more general. What I mean by this is we can, for example, fit functions like f of x is equal to, say, c1 plus c2 e to the x plus c3 cos pi of x. Um, and this is because in this case, our residual is gonna be just yi minus fi, uh, sorry, f of xi. So that's just gonna be c1 plus c2 e to the xi plus c3 cos i xi. And that's fine because this here, this e to the xi and this cos pi of xi, they're just numbers. So that means that we have something that's linear in our coefficients c1, c2, c3. So we can fit this using linear, uh, linear least squares. But we can't fit something like this if we have, say, um, f of x is equal to c1 plus e to the c2x plus cos of, uh, let's call it c3 x. We can't do that because in this case our resi residuals now are going to be yi minus c1 plus e to the c2xi plus cos of c3xi. Note, note here that our coefficients are c1, c2, c3 were all linear so they weren't, there wasn't any function being applied to these um, this now here is a function, and this here is also a function. So we can't um, take our derivative of um, R with respect to B or with respect to M without ending up with something that's nonlinear. Okay, so this is nonlinear. So this is no longer linear regression. So we can't do something like this. Okay, that's it for today. Um, thanks very much, I'll see you at the problem class.